Welcome to Pocus Geek. I'm Jared Marks, and I'm going to walk you through a critical care patient. And we're actually going to talk about a missed diagnosis where ultrasound contributed to that. We're going to talk about the pitfalls of the diagnosis and maybe how to avoid this moving forward uh, for those of you that uh, use ultrasound in your daily practice. So the missed diagnosis in this case was in a trauma patient that had significant chest trauma with a high suspicion for a lung injury. When we have trauma patients, we got to consider that they are in the supine position as we see in this depiction of a body trunk. And the thoracic cavity is going to take up this area. Now, what we want to see is that the lung is um, adherent or up against the wall of the thorax, as in this case depicted in the dotted red line. And when we have a pneumothorax develop in a supine patient, it's typically going to be anteriorly that we see this. And so we'll see that there is a separation of the lung from the anterior wall as air will typically um, collect anteriorly. So when we look at this case, we're going to look through the different views. And what we see is right here, we have the anterior right lung. This will be superior. And this will be towards the head. This will be towards the feet. We see a rib here, rib here, and rib here. And we're going to evaluate these pleural lines. We can clearly see there's lung sliding as we see actually a B line come in here. And then we're going to evaluate this area. This area with the B line, which can signify a pulmonary contusion in trauma. Um, we can clearly see lung sliding. Here it can be a little more difficult, and I'm not quite sure if, based off of this image, they felt there wasn't lung sliding present. But keep in mind, again, that lung sliding, the absence of lung sliding does not rule in a pneumothorax. Only the presence of lung sliding rules out a pneumothorax. To be diagnostic, we have to find a lung point. We are going to move down to the next view. Again, we have rib rib, and then we have pleural space here, which I see lung sliding there. And then we have actually liver here, and we can see the lung anteriorly as the patient uh, takes a breath in, that it is obscuring the liver there. Uh, second anterior view uh, looks very similar to the first view that we had. And then we're going to look at the lateral lung, and we see our spine line come down and disappear into the diaphragm. Uh, which would signify that there is no uh, pathology in the lower lung base. Uh, more superior on the lateral view, we have a rib over here, 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 and here, and then pleural line we can evaluate through these bright spots here, that bright line, and evaluate for lung sliding. And as we would suspect, lung sliding is pretty, um, pretty well visualized here throughout, and um, again, rules out a pneumothorax in this area. And this is again lateral, just at the lung base. So why did they miss the diagnosis? All we can do is assume based off of the report that they gave was that that anterior view is where they suspected a pneumothorax. Um, they did report that they saw a l absence of lung sliding. And I agree that it is difficult to appreciate there. So why maybe the misdiagnosis? And I would say that it's probably the bias. You know, being in a critical care situation and having a patient that you have a high suspicion with, with a test that then um, it could be easy to misinterpret and then support your diagnosis. And also I think that you're rushed. You know, typically in a trauma resuscitation, you often have many clinicians involved in evaluating the patient. and you can feel rushed if you're the one performing the ultrasound as others wait on you to offer a conclusion or interpretation of the test. Also, you know, this could be a level of experience. Um, I don't know if these providers uh, use it frequently or not, but this um, could represent that maybe they've not experienced this before um, or um, just have not had a lot of experience with long ultrasound. Um, I'm going to go through each of these a little bit more. Uh, we'll talk about the depth and the gain here in a minute. When we talk about maybe experience, we got to remember that anteriorly, um, if the lung is going to separate anteriorly, we should not uh, see episodes like this. So we should never see an area where we see lung sliding here and then 
absence and then below a pneumothorax just doesn't create a divot like this but instead will be a nice flat plane as we see here and so we should never see lung sliding at the dome of the chest when we don't see it uh, at an area that is more inferior or more posterior I should say so when we look at this again this divot type example will not exist and that's not how we diagnose a pneumo so when we look at this study here even if this area looks like it it does not have significant lung sliding if we're staying in the same plane on the anterior chest in the mid clavicular line we have lung sliding here at the superior portion and then at the inferior portion we also have lung sliding so if there was absence here could there be a pneumo that we're starting to see suggestion maybe but if we're staying in that same anatomical plane or that same midclavicular line, it would be unusual to have lung sliding superior to that and both inferior other than if it was a divot within the lung. Um, so I would say that this speaks against it just having lung sliding here and here. And although it is difficult, I do appreciate lung sliding here, but I can, I can appreciate while somebody may have a struggle to interpret that. The next thing um, that I want to bring up uh, is that we could also have a depth issue. If you remember, we were at about 17 centimeters. And that's good for when we want to diagnose um, pulmonary contusions, uh, which it appears this patient had. But it can make it difficult to appreciate lung sliding. So we can do a couple things. We can drop the depth uh, significantly lower. So if this was at 17, we could drop it to 8.5 and probably get a better view. We could put a zoom box on this and focus on just this area and evaluate that. Both of those things would significantly help us to do it. What I also want you to look at is though how bright and hyperechoic this area is. If we backed off on the gain, we would probably have a little bit better view of the pleural line and be able to appreciate that sliding a little more. So keep in mind that depth and over gaining of the image can make it difficult to interpret. And then one other thing you could do is you could actually switch to the linear probe if you wanted to further evaluate that, as this is often a high frequency probe that allows us to see that pleural line just a little bit better. So again, why the misdiagnosis? Um, I think that you know it's easy to have bias, especially in a critical care patient, and you have a high suspicion. Um, it's also easy because you feel rushed, and so you're trying, you know, you're not able to pay attention to those little details. Experience is always going to play into it. I think the more we see and learn, the easier it is to um, overcome the pitfalls that exist. And that's part of the reason why I'm, you know, I'm putting out this video is that we can hopefully all not miss this diagnosis in the future. Again, in this particular study, there's too much depth. Keep in mind, you can decrease that depth. You can switch. You can use a zoom function or you can use a linear probe. And there's also much too much near field gain. By having that too bright, it can be hard to see the details and see that sliding. I would suggest that you compare left to right on um, looking at this. And the only reason why is because if, say, a patient has breath holding or they're not taking significant deep breaths in, you should see similar um, examples bilaterally, and that should key you into that maybe what you're thinking is absence of lung sliding may not absolutely be that. Last thing I do want you to consider and remember is that absence of lung sliding does not rule in a pneumothorax. It could only suggest it. Um, there's a link up here in the corner that you can go to to further uh, watch and learn on how to make that diagnosis and find that lung point. I hope that video was helpful in helping you uh, learn some of the pitfalls that can happen for a misdiagnosis of a pneumothorax. If you have any questions about this uh, ultrasound topic or any other point of care uh, ultrasound or clinical ultrasound related questions, feel free to email me at pocusgeek at gmail.com. 